Yo, what is going on guys? In today's video, we're unboxing two separate $1,000 Modern Warfare 2 themed airsoft loadouts. We have a lot of boxes to go through in today's video, anything from a few pounds all the way up to a box that weighs 18 pounds. Each loadout in today's video will be made up of a primary and secondary, and also bought a surprise bonus airsoft gun to unbox as well. Alright, so we're going to be actually starting with these smaller three boxes, so we'll get into these three and then we'll go on to those huge four boxes next up. This one's a fruity looking guy, let's go with this guy. All right, so for these actually three first packages, these aren't gonna be actual airsoft guns themselves, but they're gonna be kind of complimentary accessories to the actual airsoft guns in the video. Here we go! First up, we got this little guy. Whoop, whoop. I think some of you, if you order a few of these, you definitely know what this is, but probably some of you don't. This is actually a red dot sight for actually any airsoft gun you want. So how this actually works is you just put that little riser on the bottom of the red dot sight, and then this goes on top of your airsoft gun like so. It's pretty much what it'll look like right there. Let's go on to this one right here. What do we actually get in here? One of my favorite airsoft flashlights. This thing is insane. This thing is, believe it or not, $180. So this is the TLR1 HL long gun kit. This is a streamlight flashlight. This is a thousand lumens. This thing is absolutely insane. And we'll show you guys right now what this actually looks like. So I've been using this guy for quite some time over the years, and I really do actually enjoy these. It's actually my favorite I've used, and it's just kind of like a really simple, sleek design, and it obviously works very well. So that is basically what it looks like right there. Very nice little like profile. It's very small obviously but don't get it twisted this thing packs a huge punch this thing is a very bright and then we got some other cool stuff in the package as well and here we actually opted for a pressure switch which is very nice it's really cool so these pieces actually slide onto the pressure switch unit itself and then these guys actually can go onto a picatinny mount rail so it's really cool they have that option all right last small box of the video until we go on to the big boys all right, this one is pretty simple. I think there's only one thing actually in this whole box and that is a new tactical backpack, which is pretty cool. I've never actually used this brand, so I'm not sure if it's bad or good, but I just needed a new one for my HPA tank. All right, let's go on to our first big box of the video. This guy is the biggest one of the video. So of course we're gonna start with this guy. Let's jump straight into it. This guy taking up the whole table, damn. It's a big boy. So like I said before, I do have two separate full airsoft loadouts in this video that I'm gonna use, inspired by Modern Warfare 2. But I did sneak a third airsoft gun in the video, so I hope you guys enjoy this one. All right, all right. Oh boy, all right, that is a heavy boy. This is by SEMA. Let's jump straight into this guy. Ooh, all right, let's see what we got. This is a SEMA RPK. This thing is absolutely insane. In Modern Warfare 2, one of my favorite guns is actually the RPK, but this is the actual airsoft version, so super cool. I definitely had to get this guy. So as you can see, first up, we have this insanely big magazine. I don't even know how much this holds. That's actually insane. Definitely excited to put this guy in there and test it out. Well, so you get in the box, looks like we have a little bag of BBs right there, and it looks like we have a, ooh, is this attached? I'm not sure. Let's pull this guy out and see. This thing is insane. Okay, this is a definitely a heavy boy. This thing is crazy. Look at this, holy. Sheesh. So this thing, crazy enough, actually comes with a folding stock. Definitely wouldn't expect that, but this little warning thing basically says, when folding the stock, use a stick to press the button in the folding stock at the same time so that it folds, I guess? I'm not sure what that even means. All right, so if you press this little button right there, it's actually how you fold the stock. So I'll show that right now. Pretty insane. You can see like the little back of the gearbox. So I guess that's cool. You know, I don't know if anyone is ever gonna use an RPK with a folded stock, but I guess that makes it easier to like, you know, bring it to and from the field. So I guess that's a benefit, right? I'm not too sure if this is like imitation or real wood, but it definitely looks pretty good. This guy is about $315, by the way. So definitely not extremely expensive, but definitely not cheap by any means. So that does kind of suck. It has some like, creaks and rattles with this guy for the price. It's got a full adjustable back iron sight right here. It's got a fake bolt, so that's pretty sick as well. Damn, they really don't want you to get to this bipod, holy. This guy's pretty weird. You actually have to like unlatch his bipod right there at the bottom. And then I guess, yeah, it comes undone like so. And then somehow you're supposed to press something probably and then it'll actually, you know, go to the four position. But I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Damn, I actually have to look through this instruction manual to actually find out how to use this damn bipod. It's like a math equation. How do you use bipod? I need to know. Well, that wasn't helpful. There's basically no information in that manual. Actually, how to use this bipod. Come on, man. You know you want to go up. Is there like a button? Dude, I'm tripping out. What? Oh. Oh my god. Okay, there's how to do it. You just basically like yank it up with all your force. Holy. Definitely looks pretty just sitting there. But yeah, let's go ahead and actually put the magazine in. Pretty sick. 
<laughs> well, the only thing is the magazine is so long, even though these bipods are crazy big, like you can't even put the RPK down without even hitting the magazine. So if you want to actually lay this guy down, you do have to take the magazine out. That actually just shows how big this magazine is. Pretty insane. So this guy is made up of wood and full metal and then obviously some plastic like the grip right there. So it's a pretty decently heavy airsoft gun, obviously. Nothing crazy heavy, but it's definitely on the heavier side. And this guy is a full electric airsoft gun too. So obviously we could talk about this guy all day. This thing looks insane as you guys see it all propped up all pretty like that with the bipod. But let's go ahead and load this magazine up, pop a battery in this bad boy and see how it does. All right, let's see what this bad boy shooting. First shot, 436.8 with 1.77 joules. Second shot is 455 with 1.92 joules. Damn, this guy shoots pretty hard. Last shot is 438.9 with 1.79 joules. All right, let's see what this guy's RPS is. About 5.5 rounds per second. Hmm, I like it. Not too bad. Not too shabby, pretty good. All right, obviously this guy isn't struggling by any means at that range, so let's go ahead and double the distance. All right, let's see if this bipod comes in handy. All right, it's bipod time, people. Oh boy, that was a bad idea. Big dirty, oh. Oh boy. Oh, f I deleted the results. My bad, my bad. All right, we'll run it back one more time. <laughs> Obviously, this isn't a perfect range or accuracy test by any means, but this is just kind of showcasing the consistency and the actual precision of this guy. At about 100 feet, we got one on the red, one on the blue, one on the black, and then two over there on the white to the right. And then we guess we missed one down there. And that's all I see for now. So overall, not insanely impressive, but obviously this guy is definitely shooting pretty good for a $300 airsoft gun. Obviously this bipod is just for looks, but this guy I guess kind of like wobbles around when you're shooting it sometimes, kind of annoyingly. But this guy does have one really good pro. You could just leave this guy wherever you want. So convenient. All right, no more messing around. This is an RPK after all. Let's do some full auto. Bruh. Hot damn. All right, next big box. Let's go straight in again. We'll see what we got. All right, all right, all right. We got some good stuff in this box, so let's jump straight in. The first thing we actually got in this box is actually a chest rig itself, so pretty cool. This actually goes onto your chest right there, and it's pretty simple. You know, there's not a lot of protection or anything like that. This is kind of just for more carrying magazines and maybe even airsoft grenades. And then how you actually put this guy on is this goes around your back actually into a X position, and then you just kind of clip these guys over your shoulders into these. So the front ones are just little tiny little pistol pouches right there. And then you have some of them that can maybe hold airsoft grenades or bigger magazines on the side. And then if you come around the top right here, you actually see there's a whole bunch of spots to actually carry airsoft M4 or AK magazines. All right, all right, let's see what we got in this box. This is a $500 plus dollar airsoft gun. I'm really excited to actually see what this actually turned out like. This is by LCT. Let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like. That's a damn, wait, hold up. That's a thick ass boy. It's like not too many pages, but like this is like a pretty heavy ass manual. So that's pretty cool. All right, shit, damn, that thing looks sick. Whoa, this is the LCT Vatnas, I think is how you pronounce it. It's modeled after the PP-19. And in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, this guy is known as the Vaznav 9K. Not only does it look cool and unique, it is actually one of the best submachine guns in the game right now. So of course, we had to spend a pretty penny and get an airsoft version of this guy. So obviously this guy, if you're not familiar with it, kind of looks like an AK, but there is something really cool about this guy. So as you see with the magazines, these guys are very skinny and kind of small, honestly, for a standard AK magazine, but these guys actually run off of the 9mm ammo. So like in Modern Warfare 2, this guy actually acts like more of a submachine gun than it does an AK. Cause this basically uses submachine gun slash pistol rounds in real life, so pretty cool. So when they did an airsoft replica of it, obviously they copied that layout and they have these really cool little like nine millimeter submachine gun magazines instead of those standard huge AK ones you see with normal AKs. So let's pull it out and see what this guy, oh my gosh, this is heavy, holy. 
This guy's like literally like twice as heavy as I thought it was gonna be. It's full metal, but damn, this is really heavy. So there's a couple different versions of this guy. Some starting at about $300 and working our way up all the way to the most expensive one I got here. This is the 500 and I think it's like $30, something like that for this guy. The main reason this guy is like $200 more than the standard one is this guy comes with a full metal rail at the top right there. And then a really cool folding stock right there. And might I add, this is like one of the coolest stocks I've ever seen on any airsoft gun. Pretty simple to fold this guy. You just press that button right there. And then just fold to the side right there. So this guy is a full electric airsoft gun. It does come with safety, full auto and semi-automatic right there. Kind of like a little cute bolt, honestly. I think most AKs use these 762 rounds, so that's like a huge round, obviously versus nine millimeters. So I think they want to replicate that with this guy and the bolt only goes back like a couple inches right there. So it's pretty funny to actually let out those tiny little nine millimeter bullets. Pretty sick, obviously this guy looks like a little crazy cracked out like AK submachine gun. Definitely a really cool look to this guy. Definitely love the design they did with this. You guys can see these magazines are actually clipped together. So instead of taking a whole bunch of time to actually reload this guy, you'll have a second magazine already ready to go on this clip. So boom, you get reload super fast. But there is one more really cool part that actually goes to this guy in the box. So we got a Polar Star Jack for this guy. You know what that means? It's HPA time. Let's take this guy out and give it a little peek. All right, as you can see, it comes with some wiring and tubing right there. Got the little board and the FCU in there as well. And then this is the little airsoft jack itself. Pretty cool little guy. Obviously, if you know what HPA airsoft guns are, this guy is quite the cool little addition to this guy. But if you guys don't know what this crazy $300 airsoft piece is, and you're like, what the heck is that? Why is it so expensive? In super simple terms, this guy is going to be transitioned from an electric airsoft gun to be powered by compressed air. But we're not gonna actually be messing with any of that stuff in this video. All right, and then the next box, I actually just went ahead and unboxed that for you guys real quick. And I'm just gonna show you guys what I got in there. So basically what we got in that box is just a whole bunch of cool little complimentary parts to the LCT PP19. So we got three of these packages. You get two separate 50 round little mid cap magazines for this guy. And it's obviously the same as the one that came with its stock. It does have this really cool little clip that actually holds them both together. I thought it was definitely a smart idea to get a couple more magazines for that guy. Definitely going to go through a lot of those on the field. Next up, we have a little PTS grip. This guy is the Enhanced Palmer 4 Grip 2. Pretty simple design, but this guy definitely does the job. Kind of on the smaller side for actually four grips, but I kind of prefer that with the way I grip the airsoft guns. And then next up, we have a IGL line that actually replaces the stock line that comes with that HPA jack system. Just kind of makes it a little bit of a nicer braided line instead of that weird rubber one it comes with. All right, and then the last couple parts, although aren't too exciting, are very important. We just have a new Maple Leaf Blue bucking and a Prometheus barrel upgrade for that PP19. And last but not least for this loadout, guys, to match up with that cool PP19, we have a Novridge SSP18. Because of course, with any cool loadout, you do have a secondary as well. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, this guy is called the X13 Auto, and it's based off of the Glock 18 in real life. This guy is pretty cool. It has semi-automatic and full auto. I actually have a little cool green laser with this guy at the bottom, so that's a cool little addition as well. And of course, to end off the look, I do have a cool little extended mag as well. This guy is a really cool little green iron sight on the front right there. Has a full middle slide with some cool cutouts, as well as a full plastic lower right there. All right, so I laid out the whole first loadout for this video. Obviously, we're going to go through a second one, but I just wanted to let you guys see this as a full concluded loadout. This is going to be loadout number one of the video. And if you want to see a full gameplay video of me using this loadout on the field, that is coming up very shortly. So if that is something you're anticipating, make sure to stay tuned with the channel. Let's do this. We got some point twos and some green guys in this guy. Let's see what the SSP-18 chronographs at. 308.8 with 0.89 joules. Second shot. 310.8 with 0.9 joules. And then third shot. 309.6 with 0.89 joules. So pretty consistent, not bad. Let's see what the rate of fire is with this guy. Ooh. Bruh. This corner gaff is getting beat up recently, poor little guy. About 5.4 is the rounds per second. That one's 12.2, so uh, no idea. All right, so instead of completely guessing like all my other videos, I finally got a range finder. So now actually we know exactly how far we are from the target. All right, so the first test with the SSP-18, we're gonna be shooting the target 50 feet away. All right, so as you can see, we pretty much got them all on target. Pretty good grouping for about 50 feet away. All right, so then the second shooting test, let's just do a quick one at 75 feet. Let's see what this guy's got. Ooh. All right, so this one was a little bit random. Obviously, my iron sights are not adjusted at all for this range as well as a hop-up, but I did my best. Definitely not bad results by any means. We got a couple down here missing the target as well as three up here as well. But this one barely touching the target. And then actually we got one on the black, one on the red, and almost two bullseyes right there in the yellow. So actually pretty impressive. All right, last but certainly not least, the most important test, full auto. Boom. 
Very nice. All pretty much within that target. Let's see what this guy's got. So first shot is 432 FPS with 1.73 joules. Second shot is 413.9 with 1.59 joules. Third shot, 427.9 with 1.7 joules. We'll do a fourth shot just cause. 415.9 with 1.61 joules. And then what's the RPS? Let's check it out. About 5.6 is the rounds per second. All right, so 50 feet away, we got obviously an insane grouping right here. Very good results, but this is again a $500 airsoft gun, so we'd pretty much be expecting that. So let's go back about twice the distance and see what this guy's really got. I actually did not cite this in with the red dot whatsoever, but this is basically just a little example of how good the grouping is, basically straight out of the box. They all landed within this little group right here, so very strong little grouping size for about 100 feet away. Nice! And of course, the most important test, let's do some full auto. Oh my gosh, we peppered the target. Look at that, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, the last box of the video, let's go ahead and jump in and see what this guy is. <gasps> Oof. <gasps> damn, you think I'd be better doing all these unboxings? Uh, unboxing, damn. Your boy's got some problems. All right, let's see what we got in this bad boy. Ha ha ha. Alright, so I guess we'll start with the uh, we'll start with this pistol right here. So this is the Pro Force M17. And this guy is actually based from the P890 from Modern Warfare 2. Pretty sick. So real quick, let's actually check this guy out. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. Wow, this thing feels so high quality. Yeah. This guy's a full metal slide on the actual top and then actually a full lower plastic body, but it does feel super high quality. It actually gives you some really good resistance when you're pulling it back, so it feels super realistic. Very cool little touch. This guy has a little safety right there, so now it's off safe, and then that is on safe right there. Pretty cool. The iron sights are actually very straightforward and very nice to use. They're just two white dots in the back and then one white dot in the front. All right, what else we got in this little box? Looks like we got the magazine itself, so let's go ahead and check that out. I always love the look of these magazines because it has a little like plastic extension kind of on the bottom. It just makes it look more like, I guess, tactical. This is a fully gas flow like magazine as well. That's where you put in the green gas on the top. This is a double stack magazine as well. So it probably holds about 20 rounds in this guy. Let's see what it looks like in the actual airsoft gun. Definitely makes it look a lot more tactical with this little cool extension at the bottom of the magazine. Definitely a really cool touch by this manufacturer. And there is the price right there. So definitely not a cheap guy. And obviously for this package, I did actually pay $200 for this guy. And you might be asking, okay, why? Well, it does come with obviously that one magazine in the package, the pistol itself, and it actually comes with a few more things in the box right here. So I guess the actual magazine fell out of this little like box in the, uh, you know, transportation process. But you actually do get an additional extra magazine with that little package I got. As well as you get a full Kydex holster with this guy. If you guys are curious what it looks like, I'll open it real quick. This is what the holster actually looks like. It is by EMG. And then in this other bag, it does come with this little extension where I'm pretty sure you can actually put this on this holster to make it fit on a belt. But this is basically how it works. You just basically put this guy in here like so, pretty simple. And then some holsters have like little buttons or like tabs you actually have to hold and press and get the pistol out of there. But this guy's actually pretty simple. It's pretty much just molded to the airsoft gun itself. So you pretty much just rip it out. And obviously not rip it out. It's not that hard to actually pull out. If you're running around, it probably won't come out on its own. It's pretty nice. But obviously if you give this guy a little bit of force, it'll come out pretty easily. So pretty nice. All right, we got this guy up next. So this is the FN Scar L. And this is... But first up in this package, we actually have a full gas blowback magazine right there. Put the gas actually in that guy down there. And unfortunately, these guys only hold 30 rounds, but it definitely makes your gameplay a little bit more challenging. This guy's a full metal shell on the exterior and then a plastic interior with some obviously metal parts for the gas blowback system in there. Not too light, not too heavy, pretty good weight to this guy. And then this tool it actually comes with actually helps to actually load up these weird quirky little magazines. So with normal speed loaders, sometimes you'll have actually trouble fitting these kind of weird lips on these guys. But if you have this little guy, you basically just put this at the lip right there. You load up some BBs and then you basically just 
just take this little tab and you like press them into the actual magazine like that. I've been very much anticipating getting this guy and shooting it. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Ooh, that is very nice. Don't need you boy, get out of here. All right, this is what we got. So as you can see, I opted for the black one. There is a tan one obviously too, but I thought the black was pretty sleek, so I opted for that one. So this guy is licensed by FN Herstal and is made by WeTech. The airsoft version is called the Scar L. And this guy in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is known as the TAC-56, which is based off of the real life FN Scar L. This guy has a full metal and plastic construction throughout this guy. A very, very good weight. Not too heavy, not too light. I actually really like the weight of this guy. Very, very nice medium feel. It's got a full metal rail on the whole top right there and then two side rails right there and then a bottom rail as well. You get really nice little flip up sight back there as well as that signature scar flip up front sight right there as well. This scar obviously comes with safety, semi-automatic and full auto. This guy also has a full folding stock as well. So that's a very nice little feature right there. So if you do want to use it with a folding stock, go crazy. I'm not one to actually use folding stocks too much, but obviously if you need do it's there for an option and obviously it just makes this guy carrying to and from the field a little bit easier as well but that is definitely a really cool feature right there and this guy is a gas bolt like open bolt system so basically every time you shoot this bolt actually kicks back like so not only does this guy look really cool and sound really cool when you're shooting it, obviously it adds a little kickback. This guy is definitely a treat to shoot to say the least. Definitely a satisfying experience putting the magazine in and pulling the bolt back. And I did actually have one more thing in this box is actually all these little rail covers right there. So instead of just having a naked rail, these guys will just add a really cool look right there. And of course, these guys do only hold 30 rounds. So I did opt to get a couple more magazines for this guy. So gas bullet magazines are very expensive. This is the price for all these guys right here. That is the price for just a single one of these. So it's very expensive. So obviously paid a pretty penny to get this guy to a full loadout. So you definitely got to pay to play with these guys. But these other ones I decided to get actually makes it look way more tactical and definitely a core design in my opinion than the stock magazine it came with. This kind of adds a really cool touch to the whole aesthetic of this guy with those magazines in there. All right, so now this is gonna be the full visual of the conclusion of the loadout number two that's themed by Modern Warfare 2. I added all the new cool additions to this guy as well as the red dot sight, the foregrip, and then the rail covers right there, as well as that pressure switch mount on the top right there. That's gonna be paired up with our Streamlight TLR1 HL flashlight. So that is the primary of this loadout. And then obviously we have our M17 for the secondary with a holster and an extra mag. But now there's only one more fun thing to do. Let's go ahead and see how these guys shoot. Well, that's a nice kickback. Damn, nice. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so the FPS is 349.7 with 1.14 joules. Second shot is, damn, the trigger feels really nice too. This thing's pretty sick. Anyway, second shot, we got 340, and then the joules is 1.07. Third shot, we got 337.5 with 1.06 joules. This guy's pretty sick, damn. Ooh. That sounds nice. Wow. All right, 0.25 is lit up in this guy as well as some propane. Let's see what this guy's got at 50 feet. We got one in the red, two in the blue, three in the black, one in the white, and then we got a couple misses out there as well. Obviously the results don't show this as much as I thought, but obviously I think this guy is shooting actually pretty good for 75 feet to be honest. So obviously not extremely impressive, but yeah, definitely hitting a lot of the shots that should at that range. All right, let's see how fast this puppy shoots. Not too bad. The feeling of the trigger with this guy is very good. It's a little weighted and it kind of feels very, very nice when you pull it back. So that's a very good little spring on that trigger, just making it feel a little bit more realistic. And obviously aside from this really cool realistic sound, the slide actually kicks back very nice. So overall, this guy is actually one of my favorite gas pistols I've ever shot in Airsoft. Ooh, yeah, I love these things, man. They shoot so fun. So first shot is 425.5 and then the jewels is 1.68. 401.8 and then 1.5 joules is the second shot and then the third one 396.9 with 1.46 joules yeah this thing's nice all right let's do some fall and see what this guy's shooting at about 5.7 is the rounds per second with this guy So I don't have the red dot actually sighted in with this guy. I'm just running it with the dot off. But basically, this is our results for 50 feet. Very nice little grouping right there.
this is basically like the little grouping size right there out of the box with so 0.25s and propane. So obviously not insanely good, but definitely not bad out of the box. Just basically like guessing where to aim with this guy. Let's see how fast this guy actually shoots on some automatic. Let's see how fast this guy's full auto is. <laughs> oh man, I tossed this Magna to be a cool boy and damn, look, it just got dirt all over it. Oh no. 